my um, conversion into the Christian faith. I think with the medicine is really glittery, right? I mean, it's very shining. The promise of science is really glittery. And I work at a hospital and trained at a hospital that has pretty much everything at our disposal that we could ask for. And I thought that, um, you know, medicine and science, biomedical science was going to be the savior of all that ails us. And I said, with just enough time, biomedicine is going to be able to even overcome death. And a lot of people still believe that, you know, mm -hmm. um, the movement of transhumanism and such. And that was like the framework upon which I was operating. And then I was a third year resident in internal medicine. And my chief resident, um, this is not a HIPAA violation, his story. I've talked about his story in other places, and his story is known. But his name was Jacob Deerhake. He was my chief resident. And he was like our shining star. Jake was from Findlay, Ohio, Midwestern boy who grew up to be this doctor that everyone loved. And he was just an amazing, amazing human being. So um, he, during his chief medical resident year, was interviewing for cardiac fellowships across the country. And he started losing weight and we saw Jake and he looked tired and thin and we asked him, you know, are you okay? But we knew that he was a chief resident and interviewing for cards fellowship. So of course he was going to look tired and was losing weight. Mm -hmm. And then it was April of his chief year and um, he came home from a flight from UNC interviewing for cards fellowship there and he couldn't breathe. And he went to our ED, ED our emergency department and he couldn't breathe because his liver was like full of like cannonball sized masses and was pushing up his diaphragm into his mm -hmm. hemithorax. And he was admitted to our hospital and diagnosed with a really terrible thing that I, I won't even name because I'm just so upset still about the disease that t ended up taking my friend. And so we all watched him suffer with this illness. And actually this illness is rare, but like one of the world experts in this disease was at our hospital mm -hmm. and we couldn't save him. You know, he died under our watch. And, you know, I realized after, and our whole, our whole department really suffered tremendously with the fact that we couldn't save one of our own people. Right. And I realized at the time, um, I now realize that I had created medicine into an idol. Mm -hmm. And I'd put hopes onto medicine it, that it didn't deserve mm -hmm. and it couldn't hold. And when your idols come crashing down, like the right order of things can shine out of that darkness. But that was a very hard time uh, for many of us, me included. And I, I do think now, thank, thank the Lord, I think I have the right view of medicine. And um, I'm so thankful, actually, that I'm not, I'm not in control of these things. I think, you know, I think when you're in medicine, too, you're taught if you just do things this way, patients respond and you get better. And I can do everything right and the patients don't respond. And I can do things actually not right and patients get better. And like we just there's so much we don't understand. And and. All healing comes from the Lord, and Jesus himself is the great physician. And in 2 Corinthians uh, 5, and St. Paul talks about we are ambassadors for Christ. Mm -hmm. And I, I realize now um, that, yeah, this this is just um, a submission, and that's how I view it now, and not this mastery um, that I had once thought it could be and should be.